Ready. Play. Welcome back to Talking Tennis, everyone. My name is Bianca, and it's time for another Rankings Breakdown. We have reached the end of the Sunshine Double, and what a crazy month of tennis it has been. We saw the return of Alcaraz, another great Alcaraz center battle, Iga dominating in the desert, and then on to Miami. We've had some crazy upsets, some strong performances, and some real standout stars. And yeah, we've got we've got some new some new rankings out, so let's jump right into it. Let's start off with the WTA. Our top ten stays the same. Elena Rabakina, although she did have to withdraw from Indian Wells, she was able to defend her final points from Miami. With Charleston, Stuttgart, and Madrid around the corner, we have some a lot of things to defend from our role number one and two. We've got uh Iga won Stuttgart last year, Arena was a finalist. And for Madrid, it was the opposite way around. Arena won and Iga was a finalist. So I'm going to be really excited to see what battles can take place there for them as well, since they are still one and two in the rankings. And now the ATP top 10. We have to give a huge welcome back to the top 10, Grigor Dimitrov. You guys, it has been seven years since he was in the top 10. 2018, that is the last time he graced us. And as quickly as the one-handed backhand left the top 10, it returned with Dimitrov. He is now number nine and he's been playing like a top 10 player. So it's really, really great to see him have this position in the top 10 and be having the sort of season he's having, you know, beating Alcaraz and Zverev, making the Miami final. Of course, he did fall short to the man I'm about to talk about next, but amazing, amazing starts this season so far. And I'm excited to see how much higher he can climb in the rankings. Now, of course, our Miami champion, Yannick Sinner, player of the year, without question. He is 22 and one for the season. His only loss coming to Alcaraz at Indian Wells. And with this Miami title, he also snatches Alcaraz's spot in the rankings. He moves from number three to number two. And he has been playing like number one. And I think he's coming for that one next. We will probably not see the fight for number one happen till the clay season. And a little bit thereafter, Djokovic has a lot to defend. Roland Garros title, uh, Wimbledon final. Yannick doesn't have that much to defend on clay. So I'm excited to see the battle for world number one because I think it's, it's Yannick's for the taking. And I'm going to be excited to watch for when he gets it because, mark my words, he will be world number one before this year is done. Now let's talk about some of the wider rankings on the WTA. We have some new high rankings and career highs. First of all, Emma Navarro, she's at a career high of 20. Ekaterina Alexandrova, she's at a career high of 15 now with her great run in Miami to the semifinals, beating obviously world number one Iga Shantek en route to do that. She gets closer and closer to the top 10. And if she keeps with the form, I think she could could definitely sneak her way in. The lower half of the top 10 of the WTA is quite volatile. I feel like all you need is one or two good runs and you've you've dipped your toe in the top 10 there. And moving up to the number 22 spot, our Miami champion on her farewell tour, we have Danielle Collins. I mean, wow, what a tournament for her. She's been giving pretty good performances and results all year. Obviously she had that really tough battle, tough loss with Iga at the Australian Open. And I'm just so happy for her. On her announcing her retirement in her final year on tour, she announced it January 18th. Fast forward to now, March 30th, she is a 1000 champion. And you know, she stated that this is not changing her position at all. She obviously suffers with some health conditions. So she's she's not changing her decision. And honestly, it's good for her. So she can play super freely this year and just go out with a bang. And hopefully she can continue to get results some more titles and just have like a dream final season that everyone would want and on the men's side we have some new career highs from some young guys coming up Jakob Mensik someone I've definitely mentioned before he's at a career high of 69 Alex Mickelson a career high of 70 and Luca Nardi the man that took down Djokovic in Indian Wells he is at a career high of 76 so it's good to see there's really some young guns coming up obviously I feel like with the introduction of Yannick Sinner Carlos Alcaraz it's really in my opinion, inspired these younger guys to step up and 
take these tournaments. I don't know, I feel like there's been such a long period of just the big three dominating everything. These last few months and years, we've been seeing great rivalries form outside of the big three and outside of these top guys. And, and it's, it's really exciting to see. And yeah, and with that, we are firmly heading for the clay season, everyone. We've got Charleston Open happening, um, Estrell happening, which we will be having coverage with on the channel. So definitely stay tuned for that. Literally in one week, it will be the Monte Carlo Masters. Andre Rublev, defending champion. He's not really been in very much of conversation at this year so far, so I'd love to see him pull out some results there. Yeah, the next joint Masters we'll be having is Madrid, and then obviously we've got Roland Garros from, oh my gosh, there's so much. I'm excited to see how things are gonna change in the rankings, because things are definitely gonna be a lot different once we change surfaces, and you know, we have people who prefer clay really playing at their best there. So I'm gonna be tuned in for that, and I hope you guys are as well. Thanks so much for watching the video. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more from us, and yeah. Uh, that's it for me for now. Bye!